directly from the Constitution itself. The Congress shall have the power to lay and collect taxes, to pay debts, to provide for the common defense and the general welfare of the United States of America as a country, to borrow money, to regulate commerce with foreign nations and among several states and with the Indian tribes, to establish a uniform rule of naturalization, to coin money and regulate its value, to provide for the punishment of counterfeiting money and securities, to establish post offices, to promote the progress of science and useful arts, to constitute courts inferior to the Supreme Court, to define and punish piracies on the high seas, to declare war, to raise and support armies, to provide and maintain a navy, to make rules for the government and the regulation of the army and the navy, to provide for the calling forth of a militia, to provide for organized arming and disciplining the militia to exercise exclusive authority in all cases over the District of Columbia and to make all laws which shall be necessary and proper for carrying into execution the foregoing powers that is it these are the limited delegated discreet powers that the Constitution gives to the Congress so how can the government take over health care and still comply with the Constitution. Joining me now in Washington are Tim Lynch, director of the Project on Criminal Justice at the Cato Institute, and in Virginia Beach is Jay Seculo, chief counsel of the American Center for Law and Justice. Jay, first. To Rather, what they're doing is a policy of social engineering under the guise of legislation, and they'll come up with theories about constitutional analysis, but at the end of the day, you're absolutely right. To say that the health care industry can be taken over by the United States government under the Commerce Clause or any other provision of the 17 enumerated powers you just mentioned is incorrect as a matter of law and unconstitutional in our view uh, as a matter of, of strict constitutional law. Period. But the bottom line uh, is I agree with you. The, let's be clear about this. The Constitution does not authorize the federal government to establish a public health care system like the one that they have in England or the one that they have in Canada. There would have been no reason to lay out those specific grants of power that you rattled off if the Constitution authorized Congress to establish whatever policies and programs they thought would be in the best interest of the country. There's no reason they would have laid that out. They, they laid out those specific powers because they wanted the federal government's powers to be limited, and they wanted the federal policymakers to focus on those limited tasks. This is theft of liberty and theft of property. Is freedom a reality or a myth? Are the rights guaranteed in the Constitution real or just a pretense? Wasn't the Constitution written to define and to restrain the government? As Supreme Court Justice William O. Douglas once said, to keep the government off our backs? If the answers to these questions are no longer obvious, it is because we now have a federal government whose only self-acknowledged limitation is whatever it can get away with.